Yeah, it doesn't matter. We can just go. I mean, honest. Oh, we're, we're going? going? Okay. <laughs> hey, guys, it's Steve and Greg for the, uh, what were we calling this? Our first episode of Very first. the command table. Um, we're going to definitely try and focus on uh, Amon Ket today. Right on. You know, try the new and release just came out, or the pre-release came out this weekend. Which be able to buy this stuff this next Friday. We both had a lot of fun at. I remember oh, yeah. we we had a little conversation before this about it. There's a lot of interesting stuff going on. I definitely say, from what I've noticed, it's definitely a token-based set, which is kind of odd because I never even thought about it that way. Did you get the same kind of feeling? Yeah, there. I mean, Gideon puts out tokens. There's a lot of cards that doubles tokens. Yeah, there's yeah. A, a lot about that. Plus. Counters. Yes, mean, lots of counters. Minus as well. one counters, uh, remove minus one counters, gain life, things like that. Um, which, I mean, we, we can go back to what's the uh, the uh, where you can uh, double counters, add counters, things like that. Oh, like so, doubling season? Is that what? Or you're not talking? doubling season, but the the ability to do that. To change, oh, proliferate. Them. Yeah, yeah proliferate, and that also works with minus counters, and oh, yeah. poison counters, and, and I, I know that all can, counters. Contagion engine. If that was in this set, it'd be crazy. Oh, jeez, yeah. <laughs> Could exactly. you imagine? And really, it would be really good with the Planeswalkers. Yes. You know? Not a lot of Planeswalkers, but some very good ones. Really good. I, I played against the Liliana, and yeah, that was yeah. pretty gnarly. I mean, yeah. It, overall feel, I definitely... I'm sorry I said gnarly. I'm showing my age. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely say that uh, the narrowing down of the color pie, once again, because they... They tend to do this. They tend to go to like multicolor set, and then they they narrow it down a little bit. We're definitely in the downturn of that, going more monocolor. Um, there's still a little bit of a theme where you can go like green, black, blah blah blah. You know, that's yep. always been there. But it feels like to me, especially with the the five gods being monocolor, we're we're kind of trailing down to right, that monocolor right. theme. And they've been really strong with artifacts in the last three or yes. four sets. It's just well, you know, and you can even see it in like the five that are in this set, like. Yes. I, I got, I can't remember what the name of it is, but there was one in particular that I got that just ruled the roost as far as right, artifact right. goes. And it, it's just an uncommon artifact. And I think that's the reason they made a lot of artifact enchantment removal also in the set, because those artifacts are pretty strong. Yes, yes. Um, but anyway, we're going to kind of go through a few cards here that we found that we actually, well, that I really like. Um, we're not going to do the entire set, of course, because we don't have three hours to talk right, about every right. card. So these are kind of like our commander highlights. Um, you know, we'll start here with uh, getting into the trials. So that's the first card that I, you know, pulled up here. Um, three mana planeswalkers are always pretty dangerous. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> three, three mana with three loyalty. Yes, mean, yes. And there's only plus loyalty. Yeah, there's, there's no minus loyalty. One plus one and two zero. Yeah, so it's insane. It's, it's really good. And, you know, being able to emblem as soon as the planeswalker actually hits the table is another... I don't know, that's always been pretty dangerous in my opinion. So this this card is great. Um, I know a lot of people are talking about doing specifically like Gideon tribal EDH decks, which is more on the fun side, but on the actual like more competitive side, I could definitely see like this becoming a thing. <laughs> yeah, all you do is play a pithy needle and it's over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which, so yeah, you're talking EDH, so people will figure that out. Yeah. They're going to hate things do things and come up with things that will just prevent it from happening well yeah but you got to think about like the it, i guess it depends on the meta that you're playing in and if they've seen it before but <laughs> you are playing they... white and that removes a lot of you know enchantments yep. artifacts a lot of hate well you can just board wipe you know until the end of time and that's what yeah, you're always going to have the emblem exactly well and theoretically you just you know use the board wipes that don't get rid of planeswalkers and then you always have the gideon right right and you don't care oh, about that's the true emblem. that's true yeah. very true so, um, so anyway, uh, that's getting his trials. He's great, great okay. for. Oh. So the first ability until next turn prevent all damage from a target permanent. That's key because there's artifact, there's there's enchantments that deal damage. There's there's creatures that deal damage. There's a lot of permanents that just for, deal damage. So yes. to list it as a permanent, not just a creature. Oh well, yeah, name staff good. of them. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, no kidding. So that's that's <laughs> very good. <laughs> Well, and of course, you know, he turns into a creature like all of his iterations, which is yeah. great. You know, turns himself into attacker and all that good stuff. And I, I plan to see him a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. And like I said, he's uh, already been brought up in standard a million times, and I, I expect to see him there. Um, I mean, they've been talking about the previous Gideon being banned. They haven't done it yet, but 
Cardi is really strong. Oh, it's too late, I think. I don't think it's going to happen. Now. Yeah, I think if it was going to happen, it would have happened, what, was that on Friday? Or, yeah. Or some, but can you can imagine both ago. of these being in standard? Oh, uh, no. Well, and there's three of them. Right. Technically. Okay, three of them, but having the emblem out, yeah. it's exactly. hard to lose. Exactly. But anyway, that's Gideon. Great. We'll move on to the next card here. Um, so for our next card that we chose, it's uh, Anointed Procession. Anointed, sorry. Need to enunciate there. Um, basically, parallel lives for Still learning English, right? Yeah. Okay, well, good. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, parallel lives. How long have you been in this country? <laughs> <laughs> Quite a while. <laughs> so, parallel lives for white. Um, really cool addition. I really like this card. It's great for uh, a lot of people are talking like Bant tokens or Abzan oh, yeah. tokens, EDH wise. It, it's just awesome. The Tomet deck that you're building for our commander challenge, which will, will right. come up in a few days. Um, just awesome, awesome card. Uh, yeah, it, it twice as many. The other one puts in just you know one. Yeah. So you put one in, you get one. So this puts in you know if you put out three, you're gonna get three more. So it's, I guess I would do it parallel lives too. Yeah. yeah. I keep thinking of token or clue tokens with this too. Yeah. Like that's gonna be great. And uh, overall, just an awesome card. Fairly costed, I'd say at four or two. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it is an enchantment, and people have to play certain cards to be able to get rid of them. Yeah. Um, so anyway, Anointing Procession, we'll move on to our next card here. Now we've got Dust to Dawn. Um, the way I keep looking at this card is I need to be in Norn the Wary. Or not Norn the Wary, that's not what I'm trying to think of. Uh, Doran, there we go. Oh, Doran yeah. the Siege Tower. Um, this card, great in there. Um, I also keep thinking of it in a lot of white weenie strategies, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Just a great sweeper that has an upside of being, bringing creatures back. And it pretty much protects your tokens. Yep. Exactly. There you go with the tokens again. Yeah. And then we need to talk about the new ability called Aftermath. And like you said, well, talking before this this cast here is uh, Aftermath got us both with the black one <laughs> that deals X damage to target play, or all opponents. Is that yes. What and because we were playing two at a giant, it doubled that. Yeah. So they do seven. That's fourteen. Yeah. That hurt. Definitely a lot of really strong cards in two at a giant in this set as well. What does the uh, aftermath on the dawn do? Uh, return all creature cards with power two or less from your graveyard to, uh, to your hand. Ah, okay. So once again, if you're like in a white weenie strategy, playing a bunch of little guys, I mean the card's great for a little bit of recursion back to your hand. Mm -hmm. Just a cool card overall. Uh, you know, pretty fair costed as well. Four yeah. costs for the first effect and five costs for the you know the after effect. I guess is what they're all calling it. <laughs> Um, I really like how they paired the names together with these, like Dust oh, to yeah. Dawn and Mouth to Feed, stuff yeah. like that. Oh, they yeah. did a really good job on those. Um, so anyway, that's Dust to Dawn. What's a good movie? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people have made that comment, <laughs> yeah. that joke about that, which, yeah, Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so now we're on to Aketra the True. Um, uh, this is more of an assessment of the gods in general for the entire set. I was expecting something a little bit different. Um... Some of them feel a little bit too much like their Theros counterparts to me. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you feel the same way. Yeah, so his head looks like Jack in a Box, but you know, whatever. Because <laughs> I, you know, I found, I don't know, that to be a little bit boring, a little bit narrow. Uh, I know a lot of people really like them, and mm -hmm. I, I don't mind them. Like, I really like, it, in particular, the black one's kind of cool, and the blue one's really cool as well, but... Well, I play the white one, it gives you guys vigilance, and yeah. it makes little creatures that are... Those are guys enchantment things? creatures. Catch out of the true. Can't attack or block unless you control at least three or more creatures. And you should have quite a few creatures if you're playing tokens. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, so it gives it, a, it creates a token with vigilance, mm -hmm. not giving your creatures vigilance. Sorry. Right, I, right. The, the I, old the, god. The old god. Yes, did. you're yeah. talking about uh, what's his name? I can't remember right now. But anyway. Uh, so yeah, went back to the gods, double strike indestructible, pretty good, um, not bad, 3-6 stats. Uh, I, I don't really care for this whole like meat requirements, ability to swing or whatever. I, right. I actually prefer the it's an enchantment and tell kind of thing, but that's split and Harris kind of thing. Right, um, I mean there's lots of ways, especially with this set and the minus one counters to get rid of indestructibility, but he does have six defense, which that's a lot of counters to yes. try to something. Exactly. Um, so anyway, we'll move on from Aketra here. Uh, we're going to Approach of the Second Sun. <laughs> this got a lot of talk. I mean, chatter going on 
everybody was talking about this card because the ability to win a game. Yes. The thing is, if you got the Gideon uh, emblem, it doesn't work. That's true. That's very true. Um, and going back to the wins the game card, I think a lot of people are really scared of these cards, you know, popping oh, yeah. up. And this definitely seems like a pretty fair one to me. I mean, seven costed, that's a lot. Plus, you have to somehow play it twice, which is definitely possible in EDH. You know, you just either you cycle it with its ability or you, you know, somehow right. figure it out another way. But it's definitely possible. Uh, interesting card i'd say yeah the the ability to cast it and then put it back in your library so you can cast it later yeah that's pretty scary yeah. <laughs> exactly and you gain seven life with it yeah um so anyway approach to the second sun let's move on to the next one we've got pull from tomorrow so another uh x draw spell um not as good as sphinx's revelation but right but i did see this out there a lot for people who are playing blue oh yeah if they were playing blue, um, they had this card, and it, it, it really helped them, you know, populate their hand. I was playing black, and I was trying to destroy their hand, and then this is kind of counterproductive what I was trying to do. Well, and the small downside of having to discard one card, like, who cares? Discard a land, doesn't right. matter. But I was able to pick a non-legendary. That yeah. was the one I was playing. Yeah. yeah. So, just a cool card. Um, and of course, I always pick the blue player. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Get rid of those counter spells. <laughs> And then we've got As Foretold. Um, I know there's a lot of chatter about this card, in particular with, uh, you know, mono blue control decks or pretty much anything that's very, you know, blue-green control, stuff like that. It, it definitely definitely is really cool. Um, a lot of people say Aether Vial for spell, or Aether Vial for in general, but mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely not Aether Vial. Um, the upside of being able to cast any spell, or right. any, any type, really, for X or less is ridiculous to me. I don't know. I, I can't wait to grab a copy of this card and try it out. I think it's going to do a lot of really busted things, um, especially since it's each person's turn. <laughs> so it doesn't really matter. You know, it's it, it's not uh, restricted by you know your turn or their turn or right, whatever. Right. So that's kind of nice. Yeah, I can see this in my blue white deck for sure. You know, and um, you know put things out there where I don't have to worry about counter spells, countering my counter spells or things like that to turn. And yeah, so this definitely should be in most blue decks. Yes, I would agree. Anyway, on from that, we've got Kefnet the Mindful, another god. Um, this being my personal favorite out of all of them. Um, easiest to, I guess, activate as a creature, something that you'd want to be doing in those colors anyway, which I guess is pretty much general for all of them. But His restriction is pretty tough. Uh, yeah, but I guess I look at him as a card draw engine. Um, plus, being able to bounce a land back to your hand sometimes is kind of nice. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's yeah it's it's flying it's you know it's it's flying and it's yeah. indestructible flying so yeah you can block almost everything you know but yeah. uh, and drawing cards is really strong it's three for a five five which is wow yeah <laughs> that's well, really a wow and just imagine if you've got like ancestral visions on the table you know the turn before you know mm -hmm. you play this play ancestral visions on turn one and then you play this on turn three I mean. What do you what do you care about the hand restriction or the That's hand right, size thing? Right. You've Absolutely. got it, you know, pretty much. Yeah. Well, unless you're playing a lot of spells, but of course, you know, you're playing blue, so most of those spells are probably going to can trip you into another card. So you would hope. Yeah. yeah you would hope. <laughs> so anyway, on from Kefnet, we're going to move on to Commit to Memory. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a card that I actually got to play with in pre-release. I actually had a lot of fun with it. Um, a lot of people didn't realize that it said non-land permanent and spell, so you can yeah. essentially do either or. Um, so that kind of screws people up sometimes. Uh, put a target spell or non-land permanent, yes. not both, yeah. Yes. But either or. Yeah. Yes, yeah. You, you know what I mean. Yeah. Well, I guess they don't know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, like a lot of people, you know, you can use it as almost like a spot removal as well. So right, right. It, it's nice. It is an instant, yeah, and you can get rid of that thing with the huge counters on it or whatever's coming at you. Yes. And, and what's what's cool about it is it does bury it into your library so you can't draw it right away because there's a lot of cards that say put it on top of someone's library and they, they can use a top or whatever and just bam right back in your hand. Yeah. This goes second from the top. Yeah. So the, the uh, aftermath 
the memory side. Right, can really be effective because now that card is long gone and mixed in way down in the exactly, deck. Exactly, because you know, a lot of times you'll be putting it second from the top on their turn and then going back to your turn and casting memory. Plus this one helps in facilitating the blue god. Yes. Fills your hand up. Yep. So that's pretty good. And I know a lot of people are looking at this for like Nakusar. Because mm. it's another wheel effect. Oh, yeah. Oh. You know, it, it tied to a counter spell, essentially. I mean, that's just right. great. I like I, it. I got one in my prize pack, so I didn't get to play it during the tournament. But I wasn't very strong in blue. Yeah. These, I, I, I'll say it a million times. These dual, like, double cards, like, essentially getting two cards for the price of one. Mm. I mean, there's no... That's just great all the time, you know. Like uh, even the uh, the fuse cards. I mean, those were great too. These right. are awesome. Uh, the only thing I can see is, is I always think about the hate side of stuff. So if they know someone's playing a lot of these in a the deck, which they're, they're kind of color restricted. But I mean, you put a rest in peace or yeah, you know, Lady Land of the Void and now which they're... there's gonna be because people are playing against graveyard strategies and stuff yeah. like that. Of course, you know. But I don't know. Yeah, I, I, if you have enough mana, you can cast yeah, it and cast it. You yeah. Know? So. Which I'm sure in EDH you'll be oh, able yeah. to do that. Just blue green again, you know. <laughs> Palacron. So, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> so anyway, um, on to Vizier of Many Faces. I got to play this card as well. I don't know oh, if you wow. got to, no, to take a swing with it, but I don't know. Clone effects are always great, um, especially ones that you can play from your graveyard. I I saw a lot of people just actually milling this or discarding it. And then casting it from the with the embalm, and then just playing it from the right, graveyard, right. which is great. Yeah, I was I, I really tried to play the embalm. I wasn't able to do it. I just didn't get a chance to do it before we died one time. But yeah. um, but it's very interesting. I really kind of like the idea of putting in a token of something that you know is. Well, and I, I feel like they made it really fair by having you exile the creature too. Yeah. That way you can't just keep embalming, you know, over and over. Right, and over. right, right. So they definitely, you know, they definitely played with it and figured it out and made right. it so it's fair, so people aren't just like, what the heck? <laughs> um, but yeah, clones, clones are always great. This is just a clone. Um, so anyway, we'll go on to our next card here. We've got uh, Bantu the Glorified, one of my other favorite gods out of the whole cycle there. Um, Aristocrats has always been a thing. Oh, yeah. Especially in EDH, you know, get a blood artist and this guy out there, and you're draining p people for two, you know, each time you sacrifice a creature, so, or a target player for two. Right. I should say. But this one's also each opponent loses one life, they okay. gain life. So, but you only gain one life. Not yeah. where, you know, where they would lose life and you gain life equal to all opponents with your life. Well, and I've always still found good. Uh, and it, it's, this is like Marchesa bound, obviously, yes. because yes. it has another sack outlet. Yep. Gotta love that. Like all the sack lights, looks like I can get in there on my chest today. Yes. It has menace, so it's, I mean, like flying, it's a little tougher to block. Now, what's this restriction? Uh, you basically have to have a creature die. Each turn. So, I mean, you're playing black. Right. You're probably going to have a creature die on your side of the board. Uh, what's the skeleton, the recurrent skeleton? Yeah, yeah or endless like cockroaches, that. or yeah. pretty much any of those type of effects. Like, even persist guys, or undying or guys. Like McGass. Marchessa. <laughs> yeah, Marchessa, <laughs> any of those. They all work great. Oh, yeah. Uh, three, four, four, six isn't bad. Menace, I find that to be very suitable, you know, uh, evasion most of the time. Especially, you know, for bigger guys, something indestructible as well. Mm -hmm. um, easily cost, you know, two to activate its ability really isn't that bad. No, not at all. Plus, so, yeah. it's not a tap ability. It just yeah. pay it to do it. That's... Exactly. So, sack creature, swing with him. Yeah, exactly. There exactly. you go. And in response to them targeting a creature, you sack it. You know, yep. It's just so good. I, I see that one probably going up in price more, I bet. Well, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. We'll have to see. I like the artwork, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway, we'll move on from this guy. We'll go to... Now, I put this one as uh, kind of a, a personal favorite, because uh, I do have a Tribal Zombies deck. <laughs> um, well, the Embalm feature turns each one into a zombie, doesn't it? Correct. So there you go. That seems yeah. really good. I know a lot of people are trying to brew up like black-white zombies now for EDH. I don't know. Like you could definitely use um, uh, what's his name, uh, Daxos the Returned mm -hmm. as the commander because he is a zombie. Yep. yep he yep. makes spirits, but he is a zombie. Grave Reaper or something like that. I don't. Remember. I think it's the Return. Or are you talking about a different card? I'm talking about the Grave Reaper. All zombies get plus one, plus one. You can remove a creature or card from a graveyard and put a zombie in play. Oh, yeah. There's yeah, it's, it's, 
I, I know which one you're talking about. I can't remember the name, though. But there's there's a ton of zombies. Yeah. And, you know, people obviously love the mini DH. And I, like I said, I put this guy on here as you the first one. You got zombie rats. You got just all kinds of, you know. Because I, I, I had the all zombies gain menace until end of turn thing kill me at least once. What's the, the, um, the uh, artifact that you tap, remove a card from the graveyard, and, and print it on it, and it turns it into a zombie, too? Oh, uh, mimic that. Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. Mimic that would be yeah. Well, mimic that just goes gets it when it dies, but uh, the mantle. Grim death mantle. Yeah, death mantle turns it into a zombie, a black okay. zombie. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. Now I know which card you're talking. I can see the artwork now. Yeah. 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 That card's pretty cool too. But anyway, move on from this and go to plague belcher, another zombie card. Um, kind of like a second, uh, <laughs> second, you know, kind of draining effect. Um, really cool. Uh, the minus counters don't usually matter that much, you know. The thing is, a lot of these cards put minus counters on your own creatures. Yeah. Which I thought was pretty odd. Um, but I, I, there's a lot of features that, like the green guy, every time you attack, you remove one, you gain a life. You know, which I tried to play. It died right away every time. We couldn't get all the counters off of it. But, I mean, it's one way of utilizing the minus one counters being put on your own creatures. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. So there's Plague Belcher. And Liliana's Mastery, another zombie card. As you can see, there's a theme here. <laughs> um, once again, uh, Tribal Zombies it got a huge boost with this set. Mm -hmm. um, giving all your zombies plus one, plus one, and plus one in enters, it gives you two, two, two black zombie cards. You know, if you can somehow figure out a way to recur this, bounce it, whatever, it's awesome. Oh, yeah. um, mainly put it on here just because it's, it's another Mastery. Like we... I thought those were going to be a Kaladesh thing. I really thought that was going to be the end of Masteries. Cause, oh, you know, yeah. And now we've got a, you know, a cycle outside of that cycle, which is kind of cool, which means that they're probably going to focus on doing these other places, which is kind of fun to me. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll see Jace's Mastery at some point, right, you know, or right. Nissa's Mastery, you know, so on and so forth. So. Nice. Yeah, I like that. Pretty cool. Um, now we've got Liliana, Death's Majesty. Uh, artwork for this card is I think ridiculous. she's getting older and tired because now she has a set. <laughs> I, every time I look at it, that dress, man. <laughs> and I've heard a few people kind of talk about this, like how she is still shadowed, but your attention is still drawn to her face. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. that takes a lot of skill artistically, you know, yeah, in order my, to pull off of, you know. My friend Brian is infatuated with her. <laughs> Has play mats, posters. There's a lot of people out there oh, like yeah. that. Oh yeah, he likes his Liliana. Yeah. Uh, wife won't let him put the poster in the bedroom though. So uh, it's yeah. Bummer. Yeah. I think for good reason. <laughs> 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 um, so anyway, go through a few abilities here. We've got you know, plus one, create a two-two black zombie creature token. Uh, then put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. So you're cycling your library into your graveyard, which is usually something black wants to do. Then we've got minus three. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. That creature is a black zombie in addition to its other type or other color types, uh, which is awesome. You yeah. know, that's, It'd be nice to set all, any library, but you know, that's we'll, true. We'll go with the uh, your library with the first ability feeding your graveyard. It seems pretty good. Yeah, and then minus seven destroy all non-zombie creatures. There you go, and it doesn't affect her. And what I really like about this card in particular, which I've, I think I've mentioned a few times, is that it isn't going to be one of those Lilianas like we're used to seeing in Standard where it's a million dollars right out of the gate. It's $23 yeah. to begin with and then goes up to 60 Yeah. This yeah. is a ED, or this is a Liliana that's attainable for people that are playing like other formats like EDH really mm -hmm. easily. Cause, oh, I mean, I, I see it being like a $10 card pretty easy. I mean, to plus it to put a little 2-2 two -two black zombie in, it could maybe seem modern. Because yeah. putting those little creatures out, that's what they love to do. You know? yeah. yeah. I don't know. I think it's too slow for modern. But. I think so. Well, it is five. Yeah. 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 Maybe if it was like three. But yeah, yeah. We already talked about three yeah. mana planeswalkers. So yeah, you maybe go. like four or something. And that's just not. It, that's unfair. Yeah, I played to against this um, this weekend, and they did. They used that to put a black zombie out almost every turn. And trying to get through those zombies is tough. It really is. It made a big difference. Okay, so on from Liliana, we're going to Harsh Mentor. Really like this card. Oh, yeah. This card, on the other hand, is modern, yeah. in my opinion. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, but 
application for EDH is amazing too. Um, think of this as another Profros almost, but you're using their triggers instead of yours. Mm -hmm. So I mean, like any time they activate a, a fetch line, they're taking two. Like this card is ridiculous, especially for its cost. The two-two human, right. whatever. Yeah, two two for two two is always good. Yeah, uh, it has. Uh, it's a cleric and a human, yep. which fits a lot of things. Um, and there's a lot of clerics in this set. Oh yeah, a lot of them. Um, yeah, the only two damage just for them to activate any kind of a card. I definitely want to want to be sitting. I would some. love to see this on a planeswalker, but well, yeah. Yeah, I say you know they didn't add the planeswalker, but could you imagine sitting down and seeing this while you're playing like Shroom or something like that? Oh, you're just man. dead. Yeah. Like yeah. if you can't remove it, you're in big trouble. Like yeah. if, they, if they slap boots on this guy, <laughs> it's too bad he's not legendary. Huh? Uh, <laughs> no, that'd be crazy. That would oh, be a wow. bad idea. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so anyway, harsh mentor. Uh, we've got Glorious End, kind of the time stop for red, uh, with a huge downside, obviously. A huge downside. But there's a lot of ways to get around that, of course. We know it's EDH. There's a right. million ways to get around it. Well, if you got the emblem out, the Gideon emblem, and there you again, go again. <laughs> see, he's just going to keep bringing up Gideon. That's how good Gideon is. Gideon, Gideon, Gideon. It's just a good card. <laughs> right, but see what I'm talking about? Yeah, I, I definitely do. <laughs> um, but, I mean, uh, this card uh, definitely has a lot of cool applications for... A lot of, uh, you know, you could even use it in like, um, what am I trying to say here? Like, uh, not Krin is it Krinko Mob Boss? Yeah. Yeah, like a deck like that where you're just gonna win, you know, you just play this on the t on the turn that is screwing you up. So you know, this is kind of like split second because the way they worded it in here. Uh, uh, Exile not, all spells and abilities on the Not stack. quite split second. It's but, not that quick. No, but it's not that quick, but it's still... Say somebody it, goes to overload a Cyclonic Rift, you respond by playing this. It will exile that spell. Um, so, I mean, if that's the only thing keeping you from winning, and you know you're going to win next turn, or at least right. you have a really good chance to win next turn, playing this isn't that risky, because then you just, you know, overrun them with goblins. So, if someone attacks and actually taps all their creatures' attack, and before damage is done, you end the turn. Does the damage go through? Just like with time stop, no. It's it's ending. So if they the go turn. to kill you and you tap this, and now uh, you can counter back at them and kill them. That seems pretty exactly. Good. That's that's definitely the idea. There and it's go. it's I mean at three that's ridiculous. First of all. <laughs> yeah, it's such a big card. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, like I said, you just got to get away to either win the game that next turn or get around the you lose the game clause, right, which right, right. is definitely possible once again. In so, uh, also, a lot of these cards I'm seeing Tamio's uh, emblem. Tamio's emblem? Yeah, where if the card were to go to the graveyard, it goes back to your hand. Oh, okay, yeah. Can you imagine something like that? So just like cycle it? <laughs> yeah, that's just, I mean, that would work. Yeah, that's just so. crazy good. <laughs> <laughs> so that, anyway. And that's true with the cycle cards, too. Yeah. That's true. Wow. Tamio's going to go up price now. Here we go. <laughs> Why'd I have to say Even that? Even your weird speculations. <laughs> so anyway, on from Glorious End, we've got another god, Hazareth the Fervorant. And I had this one this weekend, and I loved it. Yeah. The ability that says damage to each opponent, and when you're playing two-headed giant, that's four damage, not two. Yeah. Once and again, really, yeah, really we, I ended two, two games with this guy, so yeah. yeah. We uh, we we uh, lost a game to it as well. Wow. <laughs> Me and my teammate, we got our butts kicked by this and that crazy enchantment that whenever they cycle a card, each opponent loses two life or something like and that. Of course, when after you play something like this, your mind starts working. How can this work in other formats? And because of the uh, what's the ability that you instead of when you go to discard a card, you can pay its lower cost. Oh, Madness? Madness. I yeah. keep forgetting about this. But this with Madness is pretty Oh, yeah. Good. And everybody keeps talking about this is Heckbent because Hellbent is all the way. Yeah. So this is like one away from being Hellbent, so it's Heckbent. Uh, so you just run it in a Hellbent deck, you yeah. know, with all those old Rakdos cards and all that stuff, and there you go. You've got yourself a deck. It is red, and it's going to deal damage. And oh, yeah. It's indestructible. And, yeah, it's like... Well, and the part that kept getting me was the haste. Mm -hmm. I I always forgot about oh, the haste yeah. when people yeah. played this, yeah. and then it came up and surprised me. Of course, it was just like, well, there's a five four swinging at you. Like, how in the heck did that happen? <laughs> For three yeah. mana or four mana, yeah. what's going on here? Are we know. playing the same game? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a really good card. I really yes. enjoyed playing that card. So anyway, on to the next card here. 
And we've got Glorybringer. And another Haste. But it is oh, a dragon, yeah. so they're synonymous for Haste. And this is, uh, I mainly put this guy on here for the, uh, what is the ability called? The Exert ability. Um, I definitely got to play against it a lot. I All think right. it's pretty interesting. Um, especially if you have a way to untap them and stuff like that, which right, is right. awesome. Um, or just make it have a vigilance, you know, right off the bat, which is definitely possible in this limited format or to, any kind of format. Don't you have to tap it to do the exert? Oh, I think you're right. I might be thinking of this wrong. Okay, so yeah, you do have to have an untap ability. Okay, an exerted creature. No, you don't. No, it's just you say it's exerted. Yeah, you just exert it. And if it's got vigilance on it, it's fine. Well, that's, there we go. Yeah. That's so, pretty good. Pretty cool. An another awesome dragon in the list of five cost dragons, you know, <laughs> with haste. <laughs> so anyway, we'll move on from Glorybringer here and Glory move on to, yeah, Harvest Season. Now this card is absolutely bonkers in my opinion. Being able to grab a land, a basic land from your library for each tapped creature you control. So a lot of people are talking about playing this with that one card, the Cryptolithrite card, where you tap a creature to make a mana. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, that's just crazy. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of times, um, mm -hmm. once again, going back to, like, blue-green, you know, mm -hmm. you're going to be able to untap all your creatures whenever you want anyway, or you're not depending on your creatures to block for you. There's all kinds of crazy applications for this, but I keep looking at it in the sense that if you're playing in a, an attack deck, you know, a deck that's tapping sideways to attack anyway, right, even right. if you tap three guys and attack somebody, then play this, you're still getting three basic lands for three. Yeah, or using, uh, there's a invoke, there's all kinds oh, of yeah. things you can do to tap the creatures, and, and, and if you got something like this out with, say, the uh, enchantment that gives all your creatures 5-5 five, five after it has seven oh, yeah. counters on it. Yeah, uh, Beastmasters. Beastmasters, that, you're getting double. You know, oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Just a crazy card. Yep, very good. And then we've got Mouth to Feed, one of the uh, best, once again, uh, word pairings, in my opinion. Right, right. Just a good, you know, create a 3 3 Hepo and then draw a card for each creature with, uh, you control with power 3 or greater. I love green draw effects. Yeah. Uh, usually they're pretty crazy if you get to play them. So. Right, right. But this being able to sit in your graveyard for the right opportunity is great too. Because it doesn't have to hold up your hand, you know, be clogged. Because I find that a lot of times when I'm playing those bigger spells sometimes, I, mm. I just can't keep it in my hand, you know. i got to play it or blah, right, blah, blah. Right. So it's great. Yes, yes, definitely. <laughs> and we'll go to Prowling Serpapard, <laughs> the Cat Snake. Weirdest wow. creature typing I've ever seen. Yes, we've had a couple weird little cats, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. there's quite Last a few cats there in the set. A weird cat. Yeah. But, yeah, it is what it is. Somebody, someone, someone loves cats. Yeah, somebody in R&D is just like, uh, yeah, let's let's make a cat for every set and every plane. Um, and that oh. ability is really good because yes. it only affects you. Yep. Not like the other c creatures. The elves that, and stuff yeah, like that. You know, creature spells cannot be countered. This yes. this only you, and that's really good. It's a four three for three. Well, and the fact that it can't be countered too. Yeah. Is <laughs> let's just stack it up, you know. Yeah, and for three mana to cast something after it really seems good. You got seven mana. I'm playing this for three. You can't counter, and here comes this guy for four, and you can't counter that one either. Can you imagine this in Animar? Oh, jeez. Yeah, that's where it's going for me. Oh, you had to go there. Yeah, Ugh. Animar, <laughs> Animar. Enough said, Animar, <laughs> Animar, Animar. Okay. Anyway, Prowling Serpent Pard. Now let's go to Ronus, uh, the Indomitable. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of people are talking about this god, especially for Standard, but I think it's great for it, pretty it much It must anything. be. Look at the price. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, once again, this goes back to what I was talking about, how these gods seem to mirror the Theros ones. Mm -hmm. Like, the ability is pretty close, um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, once again, but it feels like... They, they could have expanded on this yeah. a little bit more and, you know, maybe made something a little bit different, but whatever. Yeah. Once again, I'm three splitting mana, hairs. Three mana for 5-5, five, five, holy yep. cow, and then you can target another... T oh, you the, can't target the easiest, yourself. You the easiest yourself. to attack with, though. I mean, yeah. real well, uh, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. Like, as long as you have a 2-2 two -two and you can activate this ability, you can swing with it. Well, if you did have Vigilance, this thing's crazy because it's indestructible death touch. Yeah. So great on defense. That's a wall itself, offense. you know. Yeah. Eh, just a cool card. I like the artwork once again. The yeah, artwork, yeah, I will sure. go uh, take a second here to talk about the artwork of this set. It's, it all looks amazing. Yeah. Would, would you agree? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I really like that. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Um, so anyway, 
let's move on to Champion of Ronus. Um, we got to play this in pre-release. Uh, we got lucky enough in our two-headed giant pool to actually pull two of them. <laughs> oh, wow. They uh, definitely got killed very quickly, though, unfortunately. They... I actually played it, too, and it got killed really quickly. Oh, yeah. They generally don't have a chance to swing, <laughs> which makes sense because people don't want to yeah. let it swing. So right. I kind of like using it as a way to uh, get some removal out of your way, you know. It's not... Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a good target. I mean, if you think about it, they're killing this creature in fear of your hand. So, generally, usually what's in your hand is more important. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of funny to think about that way, you know, like, right, right. are they going to kill this guy? Because if they do, then this is just going to be set up for later, you know. But kind it's, of thing. They it's it put into play, so they can't counter it. They can't yeah. really deal with it until it hits the battlefield. So, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. I really like it. <laughs> and I've got Vizier of the Menandry. Menandry? Okay. Yeah, it looks like that. a zoo there or something. Oh, yeah. The artwork's a little bit confusing, but the effect is amazing. Yeah. Um, the fact that you don't have to reveal the card, you just get to look at it, is crazy. Um, you can play any creature off the top of your library. I'm going to say the A word again, Animar. Um, well, yeah, and top. Yes, yes. Really good with top. Oh, yeah. Or even or uh, scroll rack. Scroll rack. Uh, what's the other one? Um, well, the uh, land that puts the creature in graveyard into your, on top oh, of your yeah. library. It's black, but still. Could you imagine this paired with Oracle, too? I mean, then you're revealing, oh, but yeah. then you can play a land, then you can play a creature, then you can play a land. Like, it's just like, ah! <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Artwork is. Uh, it's kind of confusing. Um, I think there's a little too much going on here, but whatever. It's it looks okay. <laughs> it's, it's snake head and man with all his pets. I think if it was like narrowed down to like just the snake and the bird or something, I don't know. But whatever. <laughs> okay, uh, sandworm convergence. I had this played against me. It's a big card. Yeah, yeah. I got to play it against somebody. Did you really? Oh yeah, in one of my sealed pulls, it was amazing. What was, I had the, like, what was the end results of that? Oh, I, I won, like, pretty handily. Oh, you just saw this one, the two-headed giant one? No, so no, no. Oh, okay. No, that, that was a different <laughs> set of... Uh, <laughs> no, the two-headed giant one didn't go too too well for us, but this was my individual pre-release. And, you know, usually there's a lot of of trying to trying to get away from have to put in flyers, the block flyers. Yeah. You know, you have reach with yep. green, and you have some of these other enchantments takes away flying, but this just says they can't. They can't even attack. Well, they... and the application I keep thinking of this in is, is like Super Friends. Like, mm -hmm. I'm putting this in a to of Super Friends because it gives you a 5-5 five five as, as soon as, well, right. at the end step, and then it makes it so they cannot attack your Planeswalkers with flyers. Like, that to me is crazy. Uh -huh. Like, it's doing so much for you. But, I mean, that's just the right. way I look right. at it. And it's a green worm creature token. And if you play where you add extra tokens, whatever, that's... Well, yeah, it, this with that's parallel That's a lot lives. of five fives. Holy cow. Or doubling season or any of those. Oh, I mean, yeah. it's it's yeah. a great effect. It's a, it's a high costed at eight, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, as but, like a control kind of like aspect, you just put this in late game. You've got a 5-5 five five every turn. Yep. You know, creatures have a hard time attacking you, especially the really good ones with evasion. With you don't flying. feel bad about blowing up the board because no. you're going to get a 5-5. Five five, so. Yeah, exactly. Um, so anyway, Sandworm Convergence. Uh, now we're getting into our legendaries. Oh, right on. So we're to Hep Hepatra. This is the one of the ones that I'm interested in playing. Putting minus one, minus one counters on everything to make little snakes, little snacks. Mm -hmm. Great death effect. Touch. Yes. Um, you know, every time I see this card, I think of Black Sun Zenith, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to kill all your first wave of snakes, but it's going to be pretty good afterwards. You know, if everybody has five creatures out, that's a lot of snakes. Right, right. And, I don't know, just, uh... <laughs> Another 2-2 two, two for two. So oh, yeah. Good. I wish it had, you know, this is me being greedy, but I wish it had Death Touch on it. But what can you do? <laughs> right, right, right. I actually pulled two of these in my, my pulls and put them both in, but... You know, when I did get it out, it was pretty effective. Yeah. And so. Well, the the fact that it doesn't. It has to deal the damage, though. That's the one. Well, it has to deal the damage, or you have to put a plus, minus one minus one counter on something. Yeah. So if you have an effect that says put a minus one minus one counter on target creature, you still get the snake. So that's where the the big part of this card is. Like people are like playing with uh, Contagion Engine, Black Sun Zenith, stuff right. like that. Right. Because. It does, not only does it doesn't have to do it, it's just if it happens, yes, then it triggers it. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, and there's so many effects, you know, 
Like, think of, uh, uh, well, not Undying. What's the other one? Um, why can't persist. I think? Persist. Like, Persist does it for you. Yeah. Because it doesn't care whose creature it is, even if it's yours. Yeah. So, like, Woodfall Primus. Is that the right one? No. Which one? Yeah, okay, Woodfall Primus. You get that guy killed, comes back, gives you a snake, and destroys something. But that's just great. Well, I also like the guy with the wither. He, uh, when a creature your opponent go, dies with a minus one counter on him, you get Oh, it. yeah. So, uh, uh, what is his name? Uh, no. Well, it's a, anyway. It's a um, black legendary. I know what you're talking yeah. about. It's like, I, I don't know if it's legendary. It's, uh, I know it has wither. Yes, it does have wither. Yeah. Uh, anyway, and yeah. there's you know, stuff like skin render, so on oh, and so yeah, forth, yeah. like... Uh, Dang it, I wish I knew most of these names off the top of my head, but I don't. And obviously there's an application for Infect here. A lot of people are making this into an Infect Commander, which makes a lot of sense because it's not only is it getting you a benefit for playing Infect, it's also giving you almost like an alternative win condition for Infect because you're not necessarily revol relying on the poison counters. If you get there that way, which usually, well, early game, like you'll kill somebody with Infect, but then you're left with two opponents that know what you're doing. So that's a way to kind of get around that because now you have an army of snakes. Right. So then you lay down the Beastmaster's Ascension and you just kill them oh, with the yeah, snakes. Yeah. Or, you know, what's uh, the uh, board or the uh, board pump that gives everything infect? Plus one, plus one, and trample and infect. Like, imagine that with like 10 snakes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Like, you're just going to kill somebody. Oh, the, the instant. Yeah, 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 I can't I can't remember what it's called, but anyway. Yeah, all your creatures get infect and yeah. trample into yeah. turn. Yeah. So anyway, that's Hepatra. Yeah. <laughs> Um, now we're on to a planeswalker, or one of the really cool planeswalkers, yes. uh, Nissa, Steward of Elements. The, the first, two colors. First X cost planeswalker we've ever seen, which is uh, pretty cool, in yep. my opinion. Yeah, it is. It's in the loyalty is with the X, so late game, that can, it could be huge. Well, and that scry, too, is really powerful. Yeah. You know, you play this for three mana, and then you plus two it, it's already at three lo or two loyalty. Well, actually, it's at three loyalty, yeah. But it could come in... Legitimately, put turn two five five lands attacking, right? Yeah, and just kill them. Oh, well, not an EDH, but more standard. But EDH would be a little bit more difficult. And they fly. They do. Holy cow. Okay, that's pretty good. <laughs> Have you not looked at this one no, too closely? No, I didn't ever looked at the ultimate on this. <laughs> it's, uh, it's interesting. I like it for its zero ability, obviously, because mm -hmm. it's just a great effect. Right, right. Um, overall, really cool Planeswalker. Really cool design. Something we, like I said, haven't necessarily seen before. Hope to see some more other interesting Planeswalkers right. like and this so, in the future. So, so far, it seems like the dual color Planeswalkers have been pretty good. Yeah. And this is just adding to it. The X ability, that's pretty cool. So... Maybe this is something the first to come. Yes. Yeah. All right. So anyway, on from that, we've got your choice of commander, the Temet. Yep. Um, got to play with this guy in pre-release. I don't know if you oh, did as well. Oh, no, I didn't never got him. So okay. Gotta I got get to play one. with him twice. So. Oh, nice. The oh. first time was in my individual uh, ED, or <laughs> individual pre-release stack. Right. Um, worked out really well. Um, there were several times where he did die and then come back as his token form and then just swing for three every turn unblockable, which is great. But what I really utilized him more for in my games was like getting like the three three flyer token, mm -hmm. and then just you know swinging for four every turn, even if they put up right. a blocker, it doesn't matter because it's right. unblockable. So I mean, true, true. Pretty interesting guy for two. Gets out there early, dies. Doesn't matter. You involve him for five, whatever. Well, also, I mean, if you got a way of playing infect, give him things unblockable. that has got infect and and pump yeah. him up. Jeez, can you imagine? I mean, it's blue white, so that'd be kind of tough. But the thing I will say is, don't let your opponents gain control of this when you give them a giant token as well. Yeah, because uh, we had that happen to us. There's a card that uh, says gain control of uh, a creature of target opponent's choice and or That's each opponent's have? choice. And oh. uh, yeah, my uh, partner had a six six uh, trample token, and I had this. Mm. It was pretty bad. <laughs> but stuff happens. So. Right on. Anyway, next card here. We've got Neheb, the Worthy. Mm -hmm. uh, Minotaur Tribal Commander. Really cool card. Um, the discard kind of thing is kind of interesting as a way to play. EDH, I know a lot of people are really particular about losing their hands. Um, you know, generally don't like to. <laughs> um, but this makes each player discard a card, which isn't so bad. Because mm -hmm. at least they're going down with you. Uh, you're playing black, so that's yeah. okay. And you're playing red and playing madness. Just be uh, helping yeah. it again, too, you know? Yeah, there you Just go. Whatever. <laughs> nice. Um, so, anyway, 
we will uh, go ahead and move on to our next card here. Um, kind of put this guy in here as another one of uh, my picks for just an interesting uncommon. Uh, Avon Wing Guide, uh, Flying Vigilance gives all your tokens Flying and Vigilance, which is the big part about it. Because a lot of token decks don't necessarily have a way to give their entire field evasion. Right. And this is definitely a really cheap way to do it, especially because you can embalm it too. Right. And, and that's the embalm the way feature is pretty good. Yes. And that's the way I keep looking at like embalm things. Is like probably what will happen is your opponents will forget that it's there, and then right. you just embalm it when you want to win. Right, but can you do it instant speed? Not instant speed, but yeah, on your turn. Right. right, on your turn, and it is kind of expensive. That is six casting costs and bomb. But yeah, yeah but I mean, go. pretty interesting. Uh, not a bad card. And it is two power, so the white titan can get it. Um, the um, there's a lot of things. Yeah, um, which, yeah. There's a lot that dies and bring them right back out. Oh yeah, yeah. Pretty cool. Yep. Um, so anyway, from Avon Wing Guide, we're going to go on to our Bounty of the Luxa. Um, this card's pretty interesting. It has flood counters on it. Yeah. Which this I'm wondering... This is actually my promo card. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm wondering what the flood counters will end up playing into an hour of de devastation. Like, because there's no other flood counters in the entire, you know, this set. Right. There's flood counters out there, but uh, you know, what's the one that turns lands into... Islands, oh, there's a whole bunch yeah, of different yeah. things like that. But I'm, I guess I'm talking about Amonkhet in, in, you oh, know, okay. in general. So I'm wondering if there's going to be some kind of like flood in Hour of Devastation, like that's the Hour of Devastation or something oh, like see. that. Yeah. Anyway. And it, Noah's Ark will come floating through. <laughs> it's an interesting card. I mean, it's different because it does something different on each turn. Because one turn you're drawing a card, another turn you're gaining three mana. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 different that way. I don't know. I'm I'm willing to try it out. I know a lot of people are kind of down on this one, but I yeah, don't know. It could be pretty cool. It's one of those quirky ones. Is once someone got it figured out, yeah. and you go, holy cow! I didn't realize it did that. You well, know? you just got to be able to plan ahead. You know, right. just plan your turns really, and that's where this kind of shines. But anyway, that's uh, Bounty of Alexa. Let's move on to the next one here. Uh, we've got Sim Simut Simut. <laughs> Simut. I'm not sure how to pronounce her name. Um, Anyway, another one of our legendary creatures. Uh, it's like they took a water balloon and threw it at like a thing of effects, and whichever one got wet, they throw it on here. I mean, really? Wow, yeah. Yeah, flash, double strike, vigilance, haste. Like, what? And then that, giving all your other creatures haste too. That well, the flash thing is scary. Yes, yes. Because it does have double strike. Wow. Yeah. It can pretty kill something pretty big pretty quickly. Oh, yeah. And I know some people just play... I mean, Maelstrom Wanderer obviously has a lot of power to it, being able to cascade twice afterwards, but mm -hmm. that, giving all your creatures haste ability in Maelstrom Wanderer is huge. Oh, yeah. So I oh, imagine yeah. people building around this because of that ability, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which definitely makes sense. And being it a creature, being the colors it is, the, the, the enchantments are out there that gives creatures the haste. This pass, it just takes its place. Yep. So now you're taking an enchantment. Well, and it's your commander. So I mean. Well, yeah, it is your commander. So you, yeah, you just can, you can clear up spots. Flash commanders are always interesting to me. Yeah, yeah. The thing, two extra. You know that they can do it though. If it's in your hand, they have no idea it's there. Oh yeah. Yeah. And plus, you know, pay one white to untap another creature. Mm -hmm. I mean that that can be huge. Like. Say you, uh, I don't know, what's a really big one that you tap for activated abilities in these colors? I can't really think of one off the top of my head. So, but. yeah, this, uh, what's the red, black, white um, that lets you put, look at the top six cards and put a creature in play? Um, oh, uh, you mean uh, the the Naya one? Uh, uh, yeah. Why can't I? Mael, there Mael. we go. Thanks, so man. This really fit good in my yeah, deck. Yeah, like being able to untap, untap Mael. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. That's really good. <laughs> so anyway, there's some of it. Uh, now we're moving on to our artifacts here. We've got Pyramid of the Pantheon. Um, I know a lot of people are saying this is uh, Gilded Lotus or whatever. Nah. <laughs> it's no, pretty slow. It's slow, but we actually used it with the Red God. Yeah. And paid its cost with that. Okay. So it worked out really well. There you go. Yeah. So, so I mean, it's definitely usable. It's an interesting idea, you know, kind of taking, like, those super-powered cards and, like, lowering the power level a little bit just to make them you know reprintable essentially right right pretty cool um there's only one to get out it so is really good plus in like untap artifact decks and if you're playing multicolor, a lot of multi two to make any color can really save you yep so anyway there's pyramid um now we're on to throne of the god pharaoh 
Um, I keep looking at this card and thinking, oh my god. Because two to essentially like deal each opponent damage equal to the amount of tapped creatures you control. I mean, you can basically just win the game off of that. If you're a token deck and you have some way to either through attacking or through some kind of ability like Convoke, like you were talking about, just tap down like ten creatures a turn, I mean, you've got everybody. Oh. Just a cool card, in my opinion. Right. Anyway, Throne of the God Pharaoh. And then we've got the Monuments. Now, we uh, kind of, you know, splitting hairs on what, how to, which way to talk about these. And I, I think individually is definitely the way to go. Um, having, obviously, the effect that your creature spells for that color cost one less is really good. Um, but also the individual effects, like we'll go through them really quick here, like the Bantu's Monument is whenever you cast a creature spell, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. And then we've got the next one here, which is Hazardous Monument. Um, whenever you cast a creature spell, you may discard a card if you do draw a card. Mm -hmm. Not bad. That's yeah. Red's way of drawing, of course. Loot, yeah. And then we've got Kefnet's Monument. Uh, whenever you cast a creature spell, target creature an opponent controls doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. So, a little defensive, not that great of an effect, honestly, but whatever. And then we've got Oketra's Monument, yeah, which is really use, good. Yeah, we use this one. This was nice. Being able to, it says, uh, whenever you cast a creature spell, create a 1 1 white warrior creature token with vigilance. Very good. That's pretty good. Yes. You're casting the creatures anyway. Yeah, that's right. And then we've got Ronus's Monument, which is whenever you cast a green spell, or creature spell, sorry, target creature you control gets plus two, plus two, and gains trample until end of turn. And that's pretty good, too. Yeah, it so really I'd say out of all, yeah. those two are probably the yeah, best, but they're all pretty good. Maybe the black one's up there, too, but, you know. Um, monuments, awesome, especially for monocolored decks, obviously. It, it almost is, it's like a, it's like a signet, kind of, because it's add mana, it's, it, I always think of the medallions too, like the yeah, rich really medallion. True. I mean, those are all spells that you cast that are red, but this is, it's narrowed down to creatures. They cost a little bit more at three, but once again, it's its just a well, powerful and EDH, effect. and this is going to happen every time oh, we yeah. do it. So. Yeah. It's really going to help get yes. a lot, especially like so, some of these like white creature costs one white and now it only costs one to get out. That's yep. really good. You play three and it's just like, oh no. <laughs> mm -hmm. All of a sudden they've got six creatures on the board for only playing three creatures, which is not bad. And then you're going on math again. Right? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> so anyway, on from the monuments, we'll go into okay, Oracle's Vault. Really interesting card. Um, this, I think, once again, really works with like uh, Atraxa effects, you know, that put counters on things like if the sooner you can get this to three counters the better that yeah. way you can just start casting spells off the top of your library i keep thinking of this in paradox engine because you play this then you cast a spell the spell comes in and untaps it so you, as long as you've got spells on top of your library you're just oh, wow. casting it you know obviously you've got your pass the lands or whatever but i don't know right yeah i just keep thinking of it that way it's it's insane pretty good i like yep. that interesting card um, and then we're going to move on to a cycle again. We've got the cycle lands. I really like them. I know a lot of people in standard and other formats are kind of bummed out about them. Uh, kind of, I mean, the cycle to draw a card. Yeah. Most cycle lands is land cycling. Yeah. I'm kind of curious why they didn't use land cycling. Here, yeah, I don't know either, but I don't really mind it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> honestly. Go, yeah. I mean, the thing is, it also you can search it up. Yes, because it is a swamp. And, well, and you know, that's for, that's the way I keep looking you know. at it too. Is because like, say you're on your turn one, and you leave up man your fetch land to either fetch up a land that comes in untapped or comes in tapped. Why wouldn't you, if you don't need it to come in untapped, just go find this? Exactly. I mean, if you got both of them in there, the one that you know the the pain land, just bring it in, take the two damage, cast your spell. If you're not going to cast, bring that in. Yeah. Who cares? Either well, or. And there are a ton of decks that like lands in their graveyard too. Yeah. You know. Oh yeah. Especially with some of the new spell like Splendid Reclamation. Like there's a lot of really good spells that interact with lands in your graveyard. So. And if you're playing, uh, I can't remember the the artifact that lets you play a land from your graveyard. Oh, uh, Crucible Worlds. Crucible Worlds. You're dr drawing a card for two every turn. Yeah. <laughs> or the, dr the Dredge one. What is the Dredge one called? Uh, 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 Life Loom? Or? Yeah, Life from the Loom. I don't know if I'm saying Dredge right, but yeah. Life from the Loom. Like, effects like that. Just awesome, awesome cards. Mm. I like them. I really wish they would complete the cycle, personally, because I'm... 
I understand what they're doing, but right. I'm tired of getting ally color lands every set and not getting any enemy colored lands. Right, right. I, I'm really they always just... come up with them eventually. Oh, yeah. yeah. But it's it just, you know, it takes time. Whatever. Right. Um, so anyway, what's after that? We've got Cascading Cataracts, which is just an interesting EDH card, especially yes. for five color decks. Yes. Yeah. Um, being able to kind of filter your mana like that, you know, pay, say you're stuck on like red green and you're a five color deck, just being able to pay your five red green into it and make all your colors is great. Yes, it's indestructible. It's yeah, nice. which, you know, a lot of people are looking at this for like uh, the uh, the spell cast guy that whenever you cast a spell, it turns a land into a creature. Oh, um, yeah. I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but. Um, yeah, Nolan. Uh, the Nolan, Lol Mage or something. It, he uh, He's a uh, ally. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, stuff like that. And then he puts three counters on a land and turns it into a creature. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Um, so anyway, that's Cascading Cataracts. And I believe that's the end of our list. Um, there it is. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I really enjoy what I've played with so far. Yep. I've seen things played against me. I wish I would have had instead of them hitting me with it. I've I've definitely experienced that. <laughs> yeah, there's some new curses that curse players oh, yeah. again. Oh yeah, that's kind of I like that. Yeah, that makes want to bring out some of the stuff that removes curses. Well, it is gives the, you a hex proof. The big one, curses. the uh, the the seven cost black one that oh, makes yeah. you sacrifice a creature every that turn. That was terrible. God. Oh, that tore brutal. me a new one. <laughs> <laughs> but overall, um, Amiket, pretty interesting. Um, I think Hour of Devastation is going to be a really good set as well. Uh -huh. um, this one, I don't know, as far as EGH goes, it's kind of a little light. It's, I mean, there's some cool cards, but it's not like... Uh, Kaladesh, in my opinion, was an amazing EGH oh, set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas this one's kind of like an okay EDH set, which, you know, I understand they need to kind of get all the all the different formats. Well, they're, they're really pushing her to try to get all formats involved. I mean, I don't really see many legacy cards in here. No, not necessarily. But, uh, yeah, modern, I can see some maybe being played. Quite a few modern. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and EDH, of course, and standard with the red stuff. I can see some, some good red decks. Well, that's the thing, too, is there's some amazing draft cards mm -hmm. and some amazing limited cards. You know, whether you're doing sealed, pre-release, whatever, right. there are some amazing right. cards for that. Right. And it really goes to show that they they almost make that a priority on every set, just right. to make the draft environment yeah. playable, and, which is nice. And their draft is still alive. It hasn't faded away. I mean, nope. there's been a lot of the formats that came and gone, you know, but draft still seems to go pretty oh, yeah. strong. I'm not sure. I, I mean, I've been here down time, Friday night here, and uh, they always seem like they have a good crew. Yeah. Well, great. Yeah, I think with that, uh, we'll uh, go wrap to Wrap up our very yeah. first episode yeah. of this, and we enjoyed it. And uh, please like us and uh, show us your love. And remember, Favorite, if you ever subscribe. in Parker, Colorado, come down to Collector Mania. Yeah. And maybe see us down here. And, you know, comment. Let us know, you know, what you'd like to see us do differently or the same or whichever way you want to see us. I mean, really. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, we'll see you guys next time. Right on.